ओके नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग डॉक्टर संतोष कुमार साहा गुड इवनिंग डिस्टिंग्विज पार्टिसिपेंट लेडीज एंड जेंटलमेन इट्स अ ग्रेट प्लेजर फॉर मी टू वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू इन दिस वर्चुअल प्लेटफॉर्म आई ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ कालिपोंग साइंस सेंटर वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू इन दिस डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म इन दिस ऑनलाइन लेक्चर वी हैव इन्वाइटेड डॉक्टर संतोष के साह फॉर दिस लेक्चर बिफोर हिज प्रेजेंटेशन आई वुड लाइक टू शेयर हिज ब्रिफ प्रोफाइल Santosh Kumar Saha is presently working as scientist E at Birbal Sahan Institute of Paleo Sciences Lucknow his research interest is dendrochronology that is study of tree rings which encompasses reconstruction and analysis of climate variability and change over the common era past drought flood river flow reconstruction glacier fluctuation and climate field reconstruction he has carried out tree ring studies in trees of indian nepal and Bhutan Himalaya and Russia towards past climate reconstruction in addition to treating analysis he also engaged in paleo vegetation and quantitative past climate reconstruction based on pollen data from Himalayan region he has published 63 papers in different journals national international journals he has supervised two phd students one in geology and another in geography and and supervising two more phd students in geology and geography in addition he supervises eight ms students in geology and environmental sciences in addition he was a resource person or course instructor of dendrochronology in various training program organized in india nepal bhutan and china he received various recognition for his resource work some are first recipient of bs venkata chala memorial gold medal in 2008 young scientist award in 2006 from pacees department of science and technology government of india diamond jubilee medal of bsip lucknow in 2016 he received prestigious insa bilateral exchange fellowship from indian national science academy of india to carry out research work in china during 2019 he is a member of several scientific associations and and president of asian dendro chronological association during 2019 and 2021 he is a founder and governing body member association of quaternary researchers and also treasurer of the same organizations welcome dr santos now i'd like to share this screen to dr santos to for his presentation please dr santos thank you dr boss uh, thank you for a nice introduction and uh, uh, um uh, and uh, i think we can start now so good evening everyone i'm going to present my screen it is visible okay good evening so uh, i am dr santosh kumar sir as a uh, dr bose already introduced me in a very elaborated way so i work as a scientist at this institute it is a uh, birbal sahani institute of paleo sciences and it is situated in lucknow and uh, we work uh, we are uh, many scientists over there and we are working in different aspect of uh, past mostly in past uh, climate and past science and that's why our institute is called paleo sciences because whatever science we do that all deals with the past um, things like fossil study how the earth formed uh, what are the different uh, uh, things happened in the past like climate vegetation how it changed all those aspects we work so in this institute i am working in uh, branch of uh, department uh, is uh, called a uh, quaternary 
and what in in this quarter division i work basically with uh, dendrochronology so dendrochronology actually is a study of tree rings and if you go in a science jargon that is the definition by definition like since 1976 they have he has given the definition uh, dendrochronology and dendro dendrochronology dendro is came from the word dendron that is a greek word for tree and the chronology is a chronos means time and logy means the study of so the assignment of dates to particular event in time series time series is could be anything like date time and uh, month anything so uh, whatever history or whatever uh, uh, particular event occur in time that is called a chronology so dendro is and time this both input dendrochronology so basically the science then that deals with the dating and study of annual growth layers in the food is dendrochronology if you see more closely may most of us we have seen that already felt the we see a circular structure a circular pattern so these are called tree rings not all the trees forms this kind of ring but many conifer species mostly the evergreen trees produce these kind of rings and these rings are called tree rings or annual rings why it is annual ring because one ring formed in one year if you if you, uh, okay uh, and there are it doesn't mean that uh, all the trees doesn't form growth ring growth ring is there in every tree that's why it's growing but the growth ring all the growth rings are not annual in nature but all the annual rings are growth ring that's why there are may, uh, few only there are few species or few trees which produce annual rings if you grow more closely rings uh, are like sorry rings are the, this is a one ring okay so first is this is the light lighter portion and this light portion is called a uh, early wood because it has very thin walls Uh, cells are larger in diameter and it appears in light in color that's why it does it is called early wood and the, this portion the black portion is the late wood the late wood portion is uh, has a thick wall and uh, the very small diameter and appears in dark in color and it is very compact so it is a late wood so early wood plus late wood both when you combine that forms one tree ring so this is a one tree ring and it formed in one year so what does the tree ring tells us it is long back in uh, the, the leonardo da vinci he said the rings in the branch of few trees shows the number of years that is whatever number of uh, trees uh, rings are there like if you have a 500 ring then it will tell you the rings and the trees which has a 500 ring is 500 years old and according to their thickness because there are a variation in size if you see me uh, these are the uh, tree rings uh, sample so the rings are some are very thick and some are very narrow so that thickness or wideness of these rings tells you the more or dry are less so if the rings are very narrow it may be a dry year or environmentally affected years if the rings are wider that very promising uh, environmental friendly year you can see so this is a cross section of a uh, tree uh, ring and this annual growth year and this and uh, all this ring you can assign a calendar calendar year like this is a bar so the rings which is very close to bar it is a recent year suppose if you collect the sample in this year then the last ring of this uh, sample will become 2022 and if you go toward the center of the center then this is the oldest one and this shows the continuous record so in this every rings the history of changes in the tree environment may be reconstructed using properties of these annual uh, rings and sometimes we get false ring also and uh, as i already said this is the lighter portion is early wood and the Uh, darker portion is late wood. So these 
two, it will combine, it becomes an uh, annual ring. So this is the concept of uh, tree ring, or and and here it is showing in a cross section of the conifer. Uh, if you see uh, the types of food, like in angiosperm and gymnosperm, there are uh, two uh, there are different kinds of uh, rings are formed. Like in coniferous, the early wood and late wood. Uh, uh, lighter and darker portions are there, and they are the prime band materials are there. But if you go in and just form, the rings are formed in different ways. And there are two types of rings one is a diffuse porous, and another is ring porous. In diffuse porous the, and the ring porous, both there are vessels. So in and just form, you'll get a vessels. But in gymnos, uh, uh, in conifer or in gymnosome, you don't get a vessels. So in diffuse porous, vessels are distributed throughout the early wood to late wood. But in ring porous, uh, mostly the vessels are larger and towards the early wood portion and then when you go towards the late wood portion, the vessels are become uh, smaller in diameter. These are the natural examples of tree rings uh, samples from the Himalayan region. So this is the Cedrus devdara, that is the devdara. This is juniper sample. This is Abbey spindle, what we call a fir. And these are uh, Abyss Densa, the East Himalayan fir. Mostly we will get in uh, Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh. And this is the Petula Utilis, that is the Postpatra. Uh, I think you must have known that Postpatra, why it is you, uh, for what purpose it is utilized. Uh, mostly in older, older days, the people uh, used to write a script in this uh, bark of this tree. And this is a Tectona Grandis, that is tea tree, um, mostly found in tropical region. Of India and uh, Southeast Asia. So these are the only two broad leaf taxa in India which forms a uh, very good uh, annual rings. If you see uh, the trees which form annual rings in different parts of India, then from the western Himalayan region, that is from this region, is Abyss Pindu, Cedrela, Juniper, Spices, Mithiana, Pinus Gerardiana, Pinus Dorsmogai, Polichiana, then uh, Texas Bacata, and then this is the broad leaf taxa Utila Utilis. This formed annual rings, okay. And from the eastern Himalayan region, from the this Sikkim, uh, then Bhutan, or Rajasthan, these are, are these are the species which produce annual rings. Then like Abyss Densa, Junipers Indica, Larix Kirpitiana, Pinus Casia, Marquesai, Roxburghi, Walichana, then Suga Timosa, uh, Texas Becata, then Betula Vitalis, which is common in both the Himalayas, Tuna Ciliata. These are the, this is the broad leaf taxa. And in from the peninsula of India like from the this central India and peninsula India, there are two two different species which forms uh, annual rings. And uh, those are Tectona grandis and Tuna ciliata. So this is just the information to all of you that uh, which, uh, what are the trees which form annual rings. And so these, these trees uh, can be utilized to study it, uh, tree ring. So uh, uh, before going into depth, uh, how we collect the sample, for a technological study and how we process the sample in the lab, I'm very clear this guy. Right? So basically, we don't cut tree. This doesn't mean to study the tree ring. We have to cut tree. No, that's not true. We will cut. We collect the tree ring sample using an instrument called the increment borer. So this is the instrument borer, and we just insert this instrument instrument inside the tree, and we drill. And after drilling, we get a pencil-like structure. And these are the, this is called a tree core. Okay, so we extract tree core and we'll get a sample. And uh, we select the site, those sites which is uh, in very harsh environment, mostly in a rocky surface. And uh, we avoid the trees which is very close to water table or very near to river because that doesn't form a very good pattern of rings. But in the trees which are growing in a harsh environment like uh, Slope, slope, uh, slopey surface, and in also in a rock, rock straps of strata, these are forms a very uh, variation in the ring pattern. So these are these are the core sample. Uh, this is the core uh, in the field, and we usually pack in a straw. Then we bring in a lab, and then we open. So this is the sample. So then we mount in a wooden frame. And this is uh, my students in uh, mounting the core sample in a wooden uh, mount and uh, and sometimes the core get twisted it's uh, twisted then we have to uh, make it make it straight 
for that we just steam in a cooker, pressure cooker steam, then we uh, make uh, make it stay, and then we mount in a wooden block, then we uh, leave it overnight just to get a, um, intact in the wooden uh, mount mounting. And this is the sample how it looks. So if you see, there's a very faint link. This is not very clear here. It's very not clear. So what we have to do, we have to uh, uh, surface the sample with a different grade of uh, sandpaper. So this is an automatic uh, sanding machine. So we sand the surface of those samples. Then we'll get a very clear pattern of the links. So here is the uh, actual physical example of early wood and late wood. This is the white, the lighter portion is early wood and the darker portion is the late wood. So this light, late, early wood and late wood become one thing. So this is the actual uh, tree ring pattern how it looks. So this is the how many rings are complete rings are visible like if you count one, two, three, four, five. five. So five complete rings are visible here. This is not complete, this is incomplete because we don't have a very good boundary. Like here. So, but it doesn't mean that uh, just count the trailing, trailing uh, pattern and you will get, uh, get the number of things. Sometimes there will be, there is a problem also. Like here, if you see the pattern of uh, a uh, uh, ring with pattern, this, this, this sample, this one and the lower one, it is perfectly matching. Like here is the narrow ring, here is the narrow ring. Here is the narrow ring, narrow, narrow, narrow ring and slightly wider. Here is also narrow and slightly wider. But if you see the middle one, this, this is not perfectly similar to this uh, uh, upper one and lower one. But if you move this way, slightly to our left side, it may match. But so there is a problem because there is one ring is missing here. The one ring is not formed or you have not actually uh, recovered while pouring the sample. So this kind of type of complication we uh, encountered when we uh, count the rings. So that's why, why can't you just count the rings back in time? Because there are several complications. So, Here it is, uh, if you will see, uh, okay, from here, uh, if you see from this upper side, there are three rings, but if you see from the lower side, there are four rings. Here there are many waiting rings, so most of the rings are get merged here. So these are called locally absent rings. Sometimes we get micro rings, sometimes very pinching rings. All these rings are merged here. So it is very difficult to count. Sometimes we get uh, some kind of resin dust. So this also misleads the counting of the ring. And there are the uh, tropical trees which does not form rings. But there are few trees which form rings uh, in annual rings, They're like tree tree in India. So the, the matching of the so this is, this is the uh, called the principle of cross stitching, and with the help of this, like if you have if you have uh, collected the sample from the living tree and it has some pattern, and if you collect the sample from the dead tree, it also has some pattern. So when you match this the pattern of this sample with this sample, and then there you will get some portion where the pattern exactly get matched. So here it is perfectly matched. So this is a last thing. So here it is 1920, so 1919, 18, 17, and 16. So this is a 17. So we can say this tree is cut or dead in 1916. Uh, sorry, 17. Similarly, if you get a sample from the old uh, wooden uh, the houses, you can collect the sample from here also and you can match the pattern of this uh, tree ring sample with the help of this. Um, uh, living sample and data. So this way we can extend the chronology or extend the sample in back in time. So why we are uh, uh, 
for still focusing on the back in time that, that I, I will tell you later why do we need a older sample okay these are the matching of the tree this between trees perfectly matched and we can assign a calendar year to each and every ring and after assigning calendar to each and every ring like, like this ring is formed in which year this ring is formed in which year based on the known date from the bark area we can we have to measure each and every ring we measure each and every uh, width of the each and every ring so this is the instrument uh, measuring machine instrument from here we uh, measure in the ring width of the each ring and that uh, values are directly input in the computer system and then those data set we use so finally what we get at uh, this kind of a uh, data set you must have seen in the movies like the uh, pcr is going on the, some graph is going on this is some something like that so this is higher and lower higher and lower this kind of thing. this means the how the in particular the rings are wider and rings are um, narrow this kind of data set so why do we do querying research because it has a various application it has application in climatology it has application in archaeology geomorphology forest management isotope so with the help of querying we can reconstruct past climate past precipitation drought and the history of past earthquake past stream flow and how the landslide uh, when the landslide occurred what happened when volcanic volcanic eruption was uh, uh, erupted then uh, we can build a glacier history and history of floods all those kind of analysis or work we can do i'll uh, give some example uh, about this uh, application and and with that with that application the dendrochronology is uh, the subject is also the name is changed like if you study uh, climate related issues or reconstruct by past climate the dendro is become climatology the chronology is changed with the climatology that means dendro climatology so in this category we can study dendro uh, climate of the past like hydrology dendro hydrology dendro glaciology so these are the some of the examples so i am going to explain some uh, some basic um, like application like dendrochronology in climate research is called dendroclimatology so why if we do uh, climatology study using dendrochronology so what is climate and what is weather if you see weather in every day we see a new news paper today's temperature is this much and our today's precipitation is this much maximum temperature is this much and minimum temperature is this much so we get a day to day weather weather report so this is weather is third term variation in atmosphere or normal day to day uh, record but if you average uh, weather For, for a longer period, let's say thirty years, then the average of those, those weather is become a climate. Like mostly, like this is the climate record from the airport. The airport people usually record the weather of every day, and they average for a thirty day. Then you will get a monthly a monthly data, like monthly temperature is month, monthly precipitation is this month. So these are the climate data. But if you see the network of climate station throughout the globe. and this is the color this uh, orange to um gray um, blue so if you see orange color is uh, the oldest this year and the blue is recent so if you see the network of climate station available throughout the globe the most of the data set or the climate station is established this uh, 100 years back only few data point in mostly in europe in very longer record in india we have hardly 100 years of climate record we don't get um, um now it's 120 we can say 120 to 130 years so we don't get a uh, much uh, longer climate data so how to get a longer time climate record so for that we we'll, we we'll use querying that means if you have the querying like let's say it, it has a to 1730 the green one then you have the uh, climate record of of 100 years then with the help of by establishing some association or relationship with these two we can reconstruct the climate history of the past beyond the existing distributed climate data so first we had a climate record of only like year 1900 to 2010 but with the help of querying we have extended the climate data from this to this so so with the help of training will we can reconstruct the past climate 
in the globally there are many trees which are still growing and still living uh, very old trees are there like uh, thistle cone pine this is the oldest tree in himalayan region in uh, india and nepal the cedrus is uh, 1500 years old suga domoza is hemlock in it is in nepal 1140 one year old it is still growing so this is the oldest tree this is the oldest tree this is the great basin uh thistle cone pine the pinus bombilia so this is known as the oldest known currently living tree presently it is 5600 years old so if you build a uh, something something is happening just a while sir next tree yeah, have to mute someone So this is the this is tree is still growing. So if you build a history, you, if you build a training chronology of this tree, then you can uh, reconstruct climate for this 5,000 years. So why we need a longer climate record? Because the longer climate record is needed to uh, predict the future climate and to model the climate uh, climate uh, scenario of any particular region, and also to understand how the long term climate is changed. and uh, how the present climate is changing as compared to the past environment like here in this example this is the temperature reconstruction from the kashmir himalaya so we have collected the sample from the kashmir that is a little valley area and there we have a climate record for very short period like 1979 to 2013 okay so with the help of this training chronology based on the pinus valgena that is blue pine uh, And and we have established the relationship with climate. So what we got the the varying chronology or the varying growth growth of this pine sorry chenna that is blue pine is directly influenced by the winter temperature. So winter temperature is positive. So we we have reconstructed winter temperature of the, that region. Like previously we have only the climate record from 1979 to 2010. Then with the help of training we have. Really reconstructed the winter temperature uh, up to 1850 that is 60 so we can see in context of longer in a uh, longer time period how the recent climate has changed so it is clearly uh, visible that in recent 30 decade the temperature the winter temperature is rise as compared to previous 160 years so with the help of this query now we can uh, Say that the climate is changing, and how, how it is changing as compared to the past. So this is really an alarming situation. So this kind of uh, application we have with the help of uh, querying, and it was also compared with other other uh, uh, temperature reconstruction from different part of the uh, Asia, and almost all the record is showing the rise in temperature during recent uh, 30 to 40 years. There is another study uh, we have carried out in Nepal, and this is the uh, drought reconstruction. Uh, so drought means the temperature precipitation and temperature increase both. So uh, drought record it was available only from this 1958 to 2015, and we have extended this uh, record back in time up to 1700 AD with the help of training data. And with the help of training data, now we can see that where the drought is very prominent. Like here, the drought is in the past; it was very prominent, and recently the uh, it is decreasing. That uh, we are facing more drought in this region. So this kind of analysis we can do, and it it was also compared with other record. Apart from climate, there are other applications we have, uh, and we do with the help of training. Some are like fire scar records. Usually, when the forest fire occurs, trees get burned, and uh, we collect samples from the those burned trees. And what happens? We get these kind of samples. So these are the kind of fire scars. And we already we can date the each and every ring with the help of uh, trading methods. So we can assign the date, uh, the 
in which oh, yes, gear dancing are formed, in which gear dancing are formed. So technically, these fire scan we can oh, know that go. we know the date of this Santos. fire scan. Like we, we know for the ring uh, date of this ring, then this fire occur in that ring. So we can say yeah, in this particular it. year, <laughs> fire event occur. So we can do uh, the fire history. Uh, we can build a fire like history of a uh, particular yeah. forest. These are the uh, other examples from the US. The Very prominent the fire years are. So in this forest, in this this year, fire occur. Here also in this year, fire occur. And very prominent fire scar uh, This is a uh, volcanic event in signal entering. It is a from a study from the Bhutan. And here we see the in the this is a temperature reconstruction based on the training. And you you can see uh, in most of the volcanic after the volcanic year the temperature is dropped. So here this is a actually this is a Mount um, Tambora. It is in Indonesia, and in uh, during 1815-15, a mass volcanic eruption occurred. Okay, and this is the very largest volcanic eruption occurred in the last millennium. And this was so massive in, uh, in the there are study which called 1816 is regarded as uh, is uh, it's called year without summer, uh, without sun. So this is a very massive volcanic eruption. So the is here almost um, after the volcanic eruption, almost uh, up to 10 years, the temperature becomes lower. The temperature was very low. Similarly, uh, in, during other volcanic year also, uh, after that volcanic year, uh, the temperature becomes low. Uh, we are, this is another study from Bhutan we have carried out, and this is the flood history. So, what happened? We collect samples, a uh, tweeting sample. Uh, and in this case, we have to cut uh, slightly uh, the portion of the tree which is growing very close to uh, water level, mostly in close to river. So then, after that, we have to study this um, ring, and we can see that there is a uh, pattern that is the anatomical differences in the uh, tree uh, rings where the flood occurs. So here is the uh, regular ring. These are very clear. But here in this particular ring. This is formed in 2009 and here there is a scar. There is a different structure form. And we have checked the history of the climatic record. <coughs> and we found in 2009 there was a, a massive um, uh, cyclone occur and that is called the Ayala cyclone and it is during May 20, uh, 29, uh, sorry 2009. And uh, due to that Basic cyclonic activity, uh, water table rise in this river and the trees got submerged. So, in that particular uh, rings of that particular year, this kind of uh, different kind of structure form. So, we recorded almost in all the trees that type of uh, this kind of structure are observed. So, this, these are called for flood star rings. So, we can build a history of flood records. If you know such kind of structure uh, form, form during the uh, uh, drought year, uh, sorry, flood year, that we will be the history. And this is a cyclone exact how the cyclone moved from the uh, Bay of Bengal to this uh, Bhutan region. That is, that. we can uh, also reconstruct our uh, the past that is, uh, landslide events also. And uh, we also study uh, the, the Wood anatomy, you can just uh, do the uh, section cut, cutting of this tree, uh, rings, uh, for example, and we uh, see the very cellular structure, spider cellular structure, and we will uh, also do the measurements of this cellular thickness and uh, other, other uh, parameters, and we also correlate with the climate or other effect, and we do the construction based on the wood anatomical properties of this tree rings. We also analyze elemental and other isotopic study that we have to separate each rings from the tree core sample and we do a series of chemical treatment and uh, we took almost uh, many days. Then we get a cellulose and uh, from this cellulose we all we measured isotope value at the isotope, oxygen isotope, carbon isotope. Mostly we do oxygen isotope uh, then. 
that oxygen isotope chronology can be utilized to reconstruct climate. This is one of the, uh, like I already said, we can uh, do the reconstruction of the climate uh, for a particular meteorological station. But here, what we do, uh, uh, like here what we did that uh, we have uh, um, carried out a spatial climate reconstruction. Uh, we have selected few uh, isotopic treating isotopic uh, samples, uh, the sites, and this is from the Himalayan region. And these are the, the cross points, these are the climatic redistribution. That all the climate, that we reconstructed climate of each and every point. So for that, we uh, correlated all the points with this uh, data set. And these are the data set. And we have uh, recovered or reconstructed the past drought history. And, these, uh, and we have seen how the past uh, known drought and uh, droughts are occurred in a special way. Like this is the Chalisa Deming, it's occurred in India, in mostly this part, the northwestern uh, provinces. And uh, it was occurred during 1783 to 1784. So you can see this is the uh, ring, the three ring pat, uh, isotope record clearly captured this Chalisa famine from this world. This is the late Victorian rain drought. This is uh, 1876-76. This is widely drought. It is occurred almost entire the globe. It affected entire globe. So this is also very much nicely captured uh, from the query. So this way we can uh, see, we can build a, a special climate uh, or drought network or the temperature history of the past. Basically, we can uh, reconstruct the historical drought or historical temperature uh, known temperature event. So this, what what we what we can infer with this, like since the trading uh, chronology or trading data set is capturing these kind of events in the past, that means trading trading is very authentic to build a climate history of, of of any particular region or from a wider geographical network. Region. This is also a different uh, drought um, year of India, and it is also. Uh, nicely captured and mostly this is average of this uh, drought based on the same study and these are actually the climate the drought of India this region is directly influenced by the SST that is sea surface temperature of this uh, eastern Pacific region uh, okay. S since uh, I am giving a talk from uh, organized by the Kalimpong Science Center so I just want to also inform that we also carried out a uh, trading study from the Kalimpong also. And uh, from Kalimpong, uh, from the lava region, we have collected uh, samples from Tuna Ciliata, that is Tune tree, and we found this tree is uh, 180 years long. This is still growing, and uh, we developed a chronology from 1824 to 2003. It was samples collected long back during my PhD period. So we have completed this analysis very after a few years uh, because the samples are very difficult. It was a broad leaf taxa and uh, we can see in Kalimpong 180 years old tree of two nights is growing in one of the lava forests. And uh, this is the chronology and it was correlated with the temperature and we, have, we can see in Kalimpong also the mean temperature from, of the winter, winter season it is also rising. So that's why the winter temperature is rising and it is also um, uh, correlated well with the trading record of the tuna tree from this region. So this is my take home take message that trading analysis is an important annual resolution tool which is widely used to study the environmental change to establish fundamental relationship between tree growth and climate toward past climate reconstruction and other life environment and climatic aspects. So there are other, other applications also, but uh, since it was a talk of half an hour only, I only need to five minutes extra. So it's just a brief idea. And if you want to know more about the training science, you can contact me through email. And also you can search me in Google and you will get uh, all the training studies from the India also, from me and other, other people who are working in training aspect. Thank you very much. And thank you, Dr. Bose, for inviting me to give a talk on this uh, lecture series of um, Kalimpong Science Center. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Santos, uh, for your this wonderful session. Now, request to participant, if you have any question, you may ask to our 
resource person, Dr. Santos. Dr. Basio, sir, if you have any queries, if you have any questions, please. No, it's fine. It's interesting. And uh, so, I heard about the traditional knowledge of trading. Uh, some, some say that say, if you see the trading, uh, trading like this and that, uh, something can be predicted. But it's interesting to see how scientific validation is being done through modern uh, instrumentation. And it's really charming to me, oh, me too also here, yeah, uh, such uh, good lectures from Dr. Santos sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. If anyone has questions, you can contact me. I am giving you uh, the... Anyone? Number. Any questions? Okay, thank you, Dr. Uh, Santos, sir, for your wonderful sessions. And th thank, thank you, you all the participants for being with us. And once again, thank you all the participants. See you again. Now, participants may leave the group. Thank you. <laughs>